Hey guys, so today I want to talk about a new article put out by Neiman Labs, which if you've never heard of Neiman Labs, they're a pretty reliable journalism source, uh, compar comparable to like ProPublica. Vox Media has shifted its hiring towards part-timers and contract workers since its staff unionized. This was a, a piece done by Josh Benton, he's a good writer. But it traces back to something I've been talking about for months here, which is unions in the digital media space, specifically unionizing at digital media companies that are still private. Private's a key part here, not, not a public company, but a private company. Well, the, the numbers, Josh Benton does a, a, does a, crunches some numbers basically, and the numbers are kind of staggering. That right up until Vox uh, staff announced that they were gonna unionize, there were 102 full-time jobs listed on the Vox website and two part-time jobs. And after the union, one, that the full-time jobs just disappeared. Suddenly those just disappeared off the website. And two, as of, as of right about today or whenever you wrote the article, there are now only 50 full-time jobs and 25 contracting to uh, part-time jobs that are open. Meaning the original 102 full-time to two part-time jobs was basically a 52 to one ratio. <laughs> Whereas now it's basically a two to one ratio. And that means just like the amount of full-time employment or you know, hiring full-time employees at Vox has gone like this. And the amount of contracting and part-time employees Vox is looking for has gone like this. Josh Benton, the writer also points out, you know, the same thing as having a BuzzFeed. Right before the Wall Street Journal leaked about BuzzFeed making their, their massive layoffs, they had a bunch of full-time positions open on their website. Then after the layoffs, BuzzFeed News decided to unionize and suddenly all those full-time positions that needed to be filled have uh, disappeared. And the, the argument I find when I talk to other people in media is that there's a need for a union to protect against the kind of instabilities of digital media in the market and protect our jobs and all the work we do here. But to me, what I find happening is like any company, the company's sole job is to survive. It's a bit like a virus. Its goal is to, is to thrive and replicate and to grow and grow and grow at all costs. And part of the problem when you unionize it up as a unionize or attempt to unionize at a private company that's still not you know meeting profitability when you unionize suddenly you add overhead to the company and that then forces the company to go like well because this is up in the air with our, our current employees that are wanting to unionize that are asking for you know more money more benefits whatever it may be and however justified or unjustified those those asks may be and i if you look into it some of the asks seem reasonable some of the asks seem yeah, a little bit hilarious um but what happens is, because they only have a limited pool of money and they need to still grow and expand as a company, they shift to hiring contractors or, or part-time people. That's what uh, BuzzFeed News did when they launched am to dm They just went out and bought, bought, hired a lot of contractors to, to run that Twitter operation. And you see this, you see contractors at basically every media company. And the contractors, when I say contractors, really they're, they're full-time employees. They're working 40, 50, 60 hours a week um, doing anything a normal journalist or producer would do. They're just under a contract, meaning they're not technically employed by that company. You also don't get any benefits when you're a contractor. Even though you're working full time, you're not getting any benefits. And what I've seen happen is that the kind of first wave of, of employees at these digital media companies, that in, in a large part you could argue are responsible for the growth and productivity of the company, they, they come in and then they unionize. And that unionization uh, creates a wall against up and coming journalists, up and coming producers, up and coming people that want to work in the digital media space because suddenly they can't get jobs, full-time jobs, because those jobs have all gone to the union. And those contracting part-time jobs are not applicable to be part of the union. So you have this kind of old guard that's unionizing or has unionized. And then all the new people that come along that work at these digital media companies, I've seen more and more, are either part-time or contractor producers, writers, journalists. And it, it's just, it's a little sad, honestly. And that these, these people that just missed the first wave, perhaps they were just younger in reality, uh, no longer get really the same opportunity that the original people had 10 years ago that are now full-time employees and now part of the union. And you could argue like, well, uh, this is the whole point is to, to unionize, to, to be part of a, to protect the job, to have security. But I don't see it doing any good. All the, all the unions, all the individual news media unions have tweeted about how uh, we're not able to prevent layoffs you know, we can't, they not only have they kind of openly admitted they're not able to prevent layoffs, uh, they empirically haven't <laughs> prevented layoffs. Now they're arguing, well, we're fighting for longer severance pays, you know, longer extension of benefits once the individual leaves the company. But 
well, there's no, maybe noble, are they doing it at the cost of having a larger staff size in general? Because then that money has to go into, you know, back funds just in case to pay for benefits that extend longer. Um, are they doing it at the expense of just hiring more people? It's, it's unclear. And I, and I also appreciate the argument that, well, this is, it's corporate America. Companies don't really care about the individual anyway. So if you're just thinking about it as yourself, you should, you know, join the union, every man for himself. Uh, and I don't know. It depends how you ultimately want to view yourself if you're coming up in media or journalism. Do you want to view yourself as a professional, kind of the professional class? Um, or do you, like a doctor or a teacher, let's say you're part of a, the AMA as doctors or you're part of the, the teachers union? Or are you, do you consider yourself more of an artist? Most artists don't really have unions. Yes, there is the, you know, SAG, Hollywood unions. A lot of the time, that's that really applies to the, like key grip on a on a movie or all the ancillary people that that play a role in a movie. And that's not to take away from their jobs or their artistic work in any way. But if you're really into you know making videos or telling stories or doing stuff in the digital media space, whatever that may be, you know from making TikTok videos or whatever the next thing is, do you see yourself as an artist? Because if you see yourself as an artist and you want to go work at one of these companies it may be better to not join a union because once you join the union, you get locked into that specific role and then what you do gets very defined, your ability to move within the company becomes very defined. And you may also just have a tougher time moving to other companies because all those other companies have now unionized as well. And I wanna be clear as I'm just kind of speaking off the cuff here that if you're part of a union working in digital media, I don't mean to imply you're not an artist or what you're doing is not artistic in, in nature, it's just, a way of viewing yourself and your role in the larger community, the larger marketplace, and how you see your future playing out five years from now, 10 years from now. If you really want to double down on just being, you know, an animator or a producer or a very select skill set, right, and still be an artist within that narrowly, narrowly defined territory, then I think maybe the argument for a union makes sense because you know you you are somewhat of a professional class you know you're artistic but that's exactly what you do you're an animator or you're exactly a writer and that's what you really really want to do you just want to do print reporting just the same as like I'm an actor I just want to act I don't want to be a writer too I don't want to be a producer I don't want to be a director but if you're coming up through digital media and you're getting you know hits doing TikTok videos or you just love making gifs or memes and you have a very specific you know artistic identity then you might be more interested in not joining a union just because it will lock you down in the end. It's just something I feel like I wanted to say to clarify. It's something to think about. If you want to check out the article, it's by Josh Benton at Neiman Labs. You can just search Vox Media Unions. You'll, you'll find the article right away. It's a good read. I recommend it. As always, thanks for watching, guys. I will see you tomorrow. You can uh, click around for another video. Left side, right side, I don't know. Like, subscribe. Bye.